Hello, everyone. Welcome to this next episode of SpinCast. Here I have Elliot Kleckner here with me at Lebanon Valley College. Um, I'm going to hand it off to him. Let me introduce his program and where they're located and everything like that, and then we'll get started. Hey, everyone. My name is Elliot. Um, we are located in Anvil, Pennsylvania, so about 20, 30 minutes from Hershey, PA. Um, again, uh, we are Lebanon Valley College. Um, we're an esports program that's been around. We were actually the first varsity esports program in Pennsylvania. So yeah. we we uh, we love to kind of tout that around. And we kind of have pride in, in our esports program starting all the way back in 2017, 2018. Awesome. Well, kind of getting started here. Um, are you guys more varsity oriented, club oriented, or a mixture of both? Yeah, we are varsity. So we have some casual, we have some individual students that do does some more casual stuff like Madden tournaments or or FIFA tournaments or stuff like that. But we we drive our program off varsity esports. Gotcha. And are you guys um, under athletics, student life? So we used to be under athletics. This is the first year that we are actually under IT. And okay. our program and our program director is actually the director of IT then too. So gotcha. um so we have a little bit more flexibility, but um but it's pretty much almost ran the same as what we did under athletics. So students have to still keep the same GPAs what they used to, they still have to do all their schoolwork and and still compete at a high level as well. Gotcha. Uh, about how many current players or teams do you have? Uh, we have around 75 players at LVC, wow. uh, and that, that goes across around eight teams. And with the school of only around 1,600 to 1,800 students, you know, 75 is a good chunk. Uh, we're probably second at LVC in terms of size for a sport under football. Wow. Yeah, no, that's definitely impressive there. Um, what games are you currently recruiting for? So right now, uh, we have a Call of Duty, a Super Smash, Halo, League of Legends, Overwatch, R6, Rocket League, and Valorant teams. Mm -hmm. um, historically, we've also had a Hearthstone and Counter-Strike team, um, but they didn't have as much interest in having a team this year as what we had in previous years, so we're always still open to to creating those teams since they are still uh, in a competitive environment as well. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, and you guys offer esports scholarships as well? Yep, we do. Yeah, we offer esports scholarships to currently around 10 students a year. Um, and so we were, we're looking to, um, instead of with the varsity esports program, we're looking for students that are looking to commit themselves and play varsity esports. And so that's why we have, uh, that scholarship incentive as well. And, uh, you said, you mentioned like committing themselves and things like that. So what are some of like the traits or skills that you look for when recruiting? So I, I think for me, since I come from, um, a, a typical, I mean, a, a typical, sports path so I, I played ice hockey growing up so it was mm -hmm. really team-based so i kind of pushed that on to my students right we have a lot of incoming first-year students at colleges that have never played on a team before or don't know how to play on a team so i i think the biggest thing for first-year students is to be coachable have a positive attitude and a buy-in for the team so basically accepting criticism but also being able to let others know um, what they're doing wrong as well. So like my team, especially Valorant this year, mm. almost after every single match, we have a circle. We all, we all talk about the match, how it went, uh, yep. and everyone kind of chimes in on um, just everyone. It's just an open platform, um, and, and it just makes the team better because everyone that they want nobody has to hold in, you know, how they're feeling. Um, it, it's a team, it's a team game, and I try to promote that. So if you're team oriented, you're coachable, positive attitude. I, I put that over skill, you know, every day out of the week. No, sure. Um, I actually, so I play baseball, so it's like one of those things where we always jog out of right field after the game, right? So mm -hmm. similar, similar thing for sure. Uh, well, that's really cool there. Um, and yeah, I mean, skill set's always a, a very important thing, obviously. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of other factors that go into as well, like you mentioned, with being a kind of a team player, working, being able to work with a team. Because you yeah. can't do that, then it's, it's going to be really difficult for your team to have success, right? So... Um, moving off that, do you guys currently host, um, any events, camps, or looking to do any of that? We actually were, we were going to this year, uh, but then the group of schools that were interested in, in hosting events together, we actually ended up, um, doing a LAN at a separate event. Um, so we were going to have like, uh, Rocket League at one school, Valorant at another school and kind of have our local area schools play different tournaments at, at certain schools. And we kind of went away with that and because we wanted all the all the all the games to be at one location so we actually are going to uh actual land instead but we were planning on having an event this year um but 
we decided not to. So hopefully mm. in the future we can. We have around, you know, 40 to 45 computers uh, at LVC um, mm. with, across the two rooms that we have. So we, we could host some lands. We just can't host, you know, four or five games that what they were looking for. Off that, what's like your current esports facility or space look like? Yeah, so we have two rooms. So when I was a student, um, we started in a small room with probably around um, maybe 15 computers or so. Mm-hmm. Um, um, I have it on the website then too for students to go look it up. I created a profile and everything. Um, so I have pictures up of the actual esports program. Um, and we have, um, that was our original space. And then around two years later, the, the program really expanded and boomed at LVC. So we uh, basically knocked down the wall next door. And we have a really large space now for our esports program. Um, so we have probably around, like I said, about 35, 40 computers. We have TVs that are touch screens. So when we go over strat practices, we can have two TVs side by side. So we have like the VOD on the one TV. Yep. And on the other TV, we have like the map that we can, you know, write on. We can have like, um, like for me with Valorant, we can put, you know, our agents up there so we can strategize a lot better. Um, in the in the actual esports room, um, we have a streaming PC with green screen behind it. So we have a pretty we have a pretty great room, um, and we were really lucky that the school bought into what we were what we were what we were looking for there for looking for doing. Gotcha. No, that sounds really nice. Um, do you guys recruit for any um, students who can help in like non-player roles as well? Yeah. So um, we have a we have a couple students that help out with our streams. So. We took a large effort into increasing our streams this year. Um, so we have one main um, streamer that the, it's oversees the entire broadcast and social media. His name's Harold. Um, he's, mm. he's awesome. He does everything. And then he brings in some people as well to help cast uh, games. So we have some students that um, either either aren't aren't playing like on the varsity team or you know took a break from esports or but still want to be involved you know with the team so we still have those opportunities if people want to get into casting or if they want to help out with social media or help out with like posts that we can put up on lvc athletics you know for that we can promote on social media so we have a little bit of everything that the students can help out with Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, no, that's definitely a growing thing, and um, there's a lot of opportunity for that, even more so than like sports, right? Because mm-hmm. there's almost more things that you can help out with. Um, so that's a really cool and exciting thing that uh, it's cool for a lot of programs to see adding that and mm-hmm. you guys as well. Um, what would you say are some of the biggest challenges that you face within your program currently? It's tough because I think a lot of the other schools in the area are also really expanding the youth sports program. So competition is a lot higher than what we had before. So, and then we see like the explosion of esports across the US. You have all these huge schools now that are becoming, you know, building huge facilities for esports and re- recruiting heavily, offering full ride scholarships. So we've yep. seen a lot more students the past year or two that is only gunning for that, like that full ride. So sure. they're, they're, so I think it's highly competitive, which is good for the student, right? And and as a college, you know, we have to adapt to the environment and and help, you know, entice students um, with the facilities we have, with the resources we have, also the scholarships we have. And but I think, you know, with the expansion of esports, it's made retrieving students a lot more competitive. And but it's it's honestly great for esports as a whole, especially collegiate, because we have a lot of great high level teams i mean there's a lot of yep. t2 tier two players that are now playing collegiate esports you know that are going to college in the scholarship and i think eventually i think in the future you're going to see collegiate being a pathway to pro i, I really think so I, I think right mm-hmm. now it's not fully there yet but i think you know it's going to be kind of how prof- other professional sports are and i think that as a college you know that challenge is going to be adapting to get those students to that next step of a mm. professional and two. Yeah, no, there's definitely a lot of pros that collegiate can bring that amateur can't really uh, mm-hmm. bring to the table. Um, mm-hmm. And we've kind of already started to slowly see the trickle effect of like some players going to pro um, mm-hmm. or like very high tier two after college. Um, yeah, definitely agree with all that there. And the inverse of that, um, what would you say are kind of some of the more proud moments or bigger achievements that you've had within your program? Um, I think we've had a couple. I, I said, like I said, I, I'm really proud of the school um, with the athletic director, bringing esports to Pennsylvania, you know, and, mm-hmm. and having LBC being the first, you know, varsity esports program and really buying into the idea of having a team on campus. You know, we've had a lot of students yeah, um, come through and 
a lot of our coaches, you know, are ex-students as well. So I'm, I'm really proud of the family we kind of have around OBC Esports where all, like all of our students are on campus and even our commuters that are like 45 minutes to an hour away, they drive in to play matches, you know? So yeah. they, they love being on campus. They love being in the room. And we really created like that family environment inside the esports program. And, and that's something I'm very proud of. But when, in, in terms of like tournament wins and stuff like that, I think around two years ago, uh, Arcadia University, which is a, a local university around an hour and a half away towards Philly, um, they had an invitational for Hearthstone and we were invited and we beat multiple top 20 or 25 t- or top 20 teams in North America. And mm-hmm. we actually beat the number two ranked Northeastern at the time to win the whole tournament. So nice. I think that, that was one of our big achievements that we've had as an esports program. Um, and I think that I'm hoping for, for many, many um, more achievements in the future. We have a, we have a land coming up in in the spring. So I'm hoping that, everything will go will go well there. Mm-hmm. No, it's awesome to hear um, and, and a lot of growth there. And it'll be exciting to kind of see um, how, you know, your program continues to evolve over the course of this year and, and moving forward. Um, mm-hmm. But kind of wrapping it up here, um, if you could give one piece of advice to any recruit watching, what would that be? I think, you know, asking, asking coaches, you know, I think getting information about the esports program and just being honest with the coaches because me as a coach i will be completely honest with you as as our program or what our what our standards are what we okay. believe in what we're offering and i i need i want from recruits to like, to like give me an honest answer and kind of know where they're at you know so i can talk with talk to them and then have them talk to my captains and play some games together right and and create that relationship i think the more and for recruits the more relationships more more relationships you have with other coaches and other captains of teams you know the better the things will turn out in the future and just be like i said before team player um you have to be coachable and just have a positive attitude i think those are the three main things and like i said in honesty as well so if mm-hmm. you have those if you have those four things no matter the skill level um you have four years to improve right in college that's what the coaches at the college are here for right so if you have those four things and are willing to improve and dedicate your time then i think you will be completely fine no and that's that's very important that's something i always say too is like you know make sure you ask the questions that you need answered um Mm -hmm. like make sure it checks off all your priorities as well um because you know and that's also for non not esports stuff as well um because if you're not comfortable with like the campus environment the dorms mm-hmm. things like that you know no matter how comfortable you are playing with the team if you're not comfortable living there being there then it don't it won't matter right so um exactly. you know being able to talk to any coach about the information you need don't be scared or yep. um you know hesitant about it you know generally they'll answer obviously like you said anything that you have or need to know um and and kind of go from there um Awesome. Well, I appreciate you giving us some time today, Elliot, to come on and let us know more about your program and everyone else that is watching. Um, but to uh, hand it off to you one last time, if you could just link any uh, socials or any other links where any players or parents watching can learn more about your program. Yeah, awesome. You can find us on Twitter at LVC underscore esports. Um, mm-hmm. Our Twitch is twitch.tv slash Lebanon Valley College. We stream all of our varsity matches there. So we stream uh, in the fall, we're wrapping up. But in, when, uh, which is we're in playoffs, but we stream almost every night of the week. And then you can go to godutchman.com slash sports slash esports. And that's our esports page. We'll have our schedule for each individual team, how they're doing, win loss, and our overall record, which is currently 67 and 23. So we had a good fall season. Nice. We're looking forward to, to keep it up here in the spring. Awesome. Well, first, uh, first program to establish esports there in the state of Pennsylvania, which is a very, very competitive state. Mm-hmm. Uh, for anyone that's not too familiar with collegiate esports, very competitive state in the East Coast. So check them out um, at the the places that Elliot just said, and uh, it will be excited to see, like I said, how you guys continue to evolve over the spring semester and moving forward after that. But again, appreciate the time, Elliot, and we'll see everyone on the next episode. Mm-hmm.